Uh, Russell, yes. I was just wondering, obviously you were in the series with these two fine actors here. Yeah. So initially you did the pilot with two other people. Yeah. I was just wondering, were you nervous about recreating the chemistry that you had in the pilot? Uh, yeah, it was a mixture. I was excited to come back and I was sad that they weren't coming back. Uh, so it felt like it was going to be a whole new beast because you went into the pilot for and it was going to be something and it wasn't. Yeah. Uh, and then at the read through, sat down with these guys, I was like, oh, well, there, there we go. It's we've locked into something else. And you sort of know who your character is by the way that you instinctively work with other actors. And uh, I knew who my George was with Andrew and Guy, and then suddenly with these guys, I was like, that's who George is. So it just felt right, and it felt like the kind of perfect storm when we all came together in that first mm. read through. Mm. Right? Yeah. Yeah, guys. He was yeah. like our welcoming anchor. Anchor. Wanker. Anchor. Anchor. Yeah. <laughs> so season one of uh, Being Human is still one of the most popular shows on iPlayer. What do you think it was about your guys' tenure on the show that's been so lastingly like attractive to the fans? It's. I think it's always hard to, to pinpoint what makes the show work so well. I mean, I think the premise is is quite original and different, um, and the writing's just really, really strong. Mixed with you know half decent acting and and um, some good you know subplots and and all the rest of it and it shot so well we had a good crew we just ev everything just gelled on our show everybody was happy offset mm. I mean I've had um, I've worked on a few jobs since and it's it's generally all pretty upbeat and great too but you do have days we just didn't have them on that set you walk off and everyone's just in great mm -hmm. form and I think it just fed us with this nice energy and kept this this unit together and kept us strong I guess that shows. On, on the on the show when you watch it now, we definitely felt it. Mm. I think it's the chemistry. Yeah, I mean, like uh, as Aidan said, like you go off and you do other shows and stuff, and you realise just how unique a time uh, being human was, or mm -hmm. unique a job. And I think it, it, the job and the um, the people and the scripts and everything, but also timing wise for all of us individually as actors coming up, you, you can't ever be back in that position again you can't sort of um, recreate that it's a bit like for me I didn't go to university and I feel like this is my university experience <laughs> and no matter how much you're brilliant your life is and your career is after you leave university that those bonds and those experiences you have at that time in your life Especially so, your life. Yeah, yeah, school, so yeah. significant but it did it felt a bit like you know school was out when we were mm -hmm. off we were sort of away Party's from home over. and um, yeah. living in digs together and it was a very unique, special time, I think, for me anyway, personally, let alone p professionally. But I think it reads, I think, I think you can see that on camera. Yeah. I feel like, I think the show kind of exceeds what it, its kind of parameters of being part of sci-fi and supernatural, is that A, sci-fi fans are the best and they're mm. so loyal and they commit to it and they will watch things over and over and over again to gain more knowledge and information from all the little intricacies of it. But then this show kind of went beyond that and people responded to it because of the relationships in it and the emotions and they could see the metaphors and three people kind of struggling to be human, to kind of live in the world and what it is to live in the world with issues, you know? And that's, I think that's why it's been one of them shows that gets rediscovered and hopefully for years you, upon. Do you think that the medium of sci-fi helped to bring out the more human issues that people experience on, on a day-to-day -day basis? So using that to, to That metaphor out. for... Yeah, totally. Well, I think that's what Toby's... Mm -hmm. Toby originally wrote the show about someone with rage, someone who was agoraphobic and painfully shy, and someone who maybe had... Addiction. Addiction um, issues. Mm -hmm. And that... that they he couldn't access it and suddenly he was like put okay werewolf he first came to the werewolf and then the rest and the rest has fell into place and I think as soon as he got into that it came alive but it's rooted in true human mm -hmm. kind of foibles yeah. behaviors the template, you know? yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What were the uh, like most human like, sides of the characters do you think that uh, your, your characters have? And on the flip side, the most monstrous sides of them as well. They're, you know, they're trying so hard to be human. Mm. I think what I mean the obvious things are trying to be human, werewolf, trying to be human, vampire. But you didn't seem to have any darkness in you. And when when Annie tried to kind of muster up her poltergeist abilities, it mm. was still always kind of half-hearted because she didn't mm. want to hurt anyone. Mm. So out of all the characters, Annie was definitely the nicest she didn't change she didn't have like a darkness she mm. had to overcome mm. she was the innocent really she mm. was but i would say her you know the thing that she struggled with was being um 
scene and and I know I think it was probably more in season two where her her visibility was so sort of dependent on other people's approval and then the whole thread the story thread um, of she would disappear without these two mm. it you know it sort of leaned into her codependency and that need to be seen and valued by external and I think that was her in a conflict is, is feeling valuable just by herself and being able to um, find that strength which I think by the end she has and it's interesting she's the last one to leave because she did exist by herself eventually um, and as much as the home and the boys were her her rock by the end she didn't need them to exist which I think was probably her parallel with with the human trait of codependency <laughs> yeah what were the standout story arcs from the time that you had on the show like in looking back what stories do you really remember the most like connecting to for each of your characters I think for Mitchell when Mitchell started to uh started to rise the ranks of, of some of the other vampires, hang out with them more and get a sense of what was going on. And when he was, um, he set himself up in this, in this garage and, and it was a time when Herrick thought he was, uh, he was really coming into his own and it was a way that Mitchell was really understanding what was going on. Um, that, and that, I think that was one of the first storylines that really brought Mitchell out of the house and separated Mitchell from from his two flatmates, he when became. When he went on to Box Tunnel Twenty, when that's we were, right. When that's we right. were losing Mitchell, that's right. And then there was all this stuff on the news, and it was horrific. Yeah. And when it dawns on us that that that's was right. our friend, that's right, had yeah. committed that mm -hmm. atrocious crime. Mm -hmm. Just suddenly felt like there was a stranger, like in the house. Yeah. Right. I think it was threatening such and it was a scary. Point. And that as an arc was such a lo that was season three. That mm. was such huge, a lovely mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kind of thing to play. Mm. A vampire and a werewolf and a ghost all living in the same house together is a pretty scary situation. Have any of your real life housing arrangements ever been <laughs> scary? <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> well, we, I mean, we didn't live together um, per se, but we lived like I don't think in it little. Just means just us, yeah. just yeah. generally yeah. speaking. But in, in our general lives. speaking, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've not. I mean, I've been pretty lucky in that I've, I've by yourself. I've lived by myself. <laughs> um, um, I'm sure I've been kicked out and have kicked people out in the past. Um, I, I, I tend to live alone these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not too. Uh, Russell, any horrifying roommates? Flatmates. <laughs> I had a woman turn up and was on my couch when I woke up one morning a little while back. She was asleep and she stayed for two oh, no. days and I didn't know who she was. <laughs> And she, a friend had a spare key and I, apparently I've been told that I don't know but she'd been let in and she helped herself to all my food. I came back one day, there were cigarette butts in the, she'd been smoking doors and she was asleep on my bed. Wow. And yeah. That's all and like, she, and all she, all she was eating, yeah, she's like, hey, she was Italian. She's like, I can't leave the house. I want to leave but I feel high, I feel sick. I said, what have you eaten? She's eating Doritos. <laughs> and she just ate Doritos, Doritos. And then she left one day. She left, your Doritos? She, she left, I had a few packets of Gone now. Yeah. Gone. gone. She left like this pashmina behind with like frayed ends, and that was it. Gone into the night. I don't know where she'd gone. I put it all on Twitter. Couch there it was. Yeah. But that oh was uh, that was just bizarre. Brilliant. We just like she was very very odd. Yeah. Wow. Well, I know. Where. You know, we just woke up in the morning. You're like, what the? Who the? Who no. Are you? No one knows what that. That's literally <laughs> quite a unique yeah, experience. Was, yeah. You know, when you wake up and there's a strange woman on your couch. No. Yeah. That's no. Not yeah. An everyday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Never happened that to was me. me. Never happened to me either. Yeah. <laughs> How do you think you uh, developed as actors um, through the series? Better, uh, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, hopefully we got more... That to me was training. I mean, like, for, certainly, I mean, because the beautiful thing about being human is you're making people laugh, cry, there's adventure stuff, there's occasionally you have to try and do something that resembles an action sequence and um, we, we got to play so much it's not a straight comedy and it certainly didn't feel like and also the very domestic scenes which I personally mm -hmm. love um, but keeping that kind of um, naturalism naturalism and also I, I think it was again something I took for granted at the time a real character driven piece yeah like all the scenes were only uh, when you fall in love with um, characters I think they can take you anywhere mm -hmm. um, and so I think for me being human was the first time I ever really got to really flesh out and live a character and kind of feel like I knew Annie mannerisms I knew Annie, how Annie would react to certain things and um, 
and as an actor, you, particularly with TV, very rarely have time to invest in that and then and then time to play it out. Um, so for me, I think being human grew me as an actor, um, really did, I, 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 and spoiled me a little bit. Mm. Yeah, I mean, me too. I mean, just showing up every day and, and, and living on, on the set, I mean, you can't not learn a bunch of really important lessons as an actor, you know, you're just, you're there all the time. It's one of my first jobs and, and just seeing, just having a clapperboard come up and just turning over yeah. a lot and putting a lot of hours down was just invaluable for me, you know, um, and gave me a lot of confidence, really. Is yeah. it your first job? Kind of one of the very first ones, yeah, yeah. We yeah. made him. Yeah. <laughs> we like to we'll take credit for that. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe what? Vampire. <laughs> 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 Aidan, yeah. theatre background help at all people Yeah, very much. I mean, I, I'd done maybe five or six years of, of just theatre um, prior to, to being human. Um, so this was kind of kind of the only experience I had on, on camera. But yeah, I mean, it's, again, invaluable being on, being on stage, but, but doesn't equate in the same way, you know, sitting down to, with, with these guys and try and make it, talking about whatever we would talk about and to make it as natural as possible. And, and it's, not, um, it's not something you necessarily pick up in... in uh, in drama school, you just you just have to be there and just connect and be aware and just just respond to the other actor and listen and that kind of thing. So, they were um, yeah, all those important lessons. Thank you. Uh, the show had a lot of uh, memorable guest stars uh, during its tenure. Um, you mentioned earlier you'd want to be Kirby. Uh, Gil. Oh, Kirby. Kirby. Um, Thank you. <laughs> so, like characters like that really stick out. With yeah. Things like that you had that you just thought I want you to come back more or like you're really glad you got to explore those yeah. areas. Um, so many. I think. I think probably for me, one of the loveliest things that kept coming back is that our guest stars enjoyed their experience on the show. And well, they were fa a lot of people were fans, fans of, of the, the show, show yeah. and then they were on it, and that's the best feeling. The best feeling to attract mm. the cal that kind of yeah, caliber. Yeah, totally. um, Because I think and Robson Green was like the right. biggest, oh, yeah. biggest fan of that's being right. human. He petitioned for himself to be in it, that's and amazing. then he was in it. And so he was like, every day he was like. It's, it, I mean, it really, uh, really touched us because I think we we feel so close to the show, but but no one, I don't even think, even up to the producer level, felt possessive over the show. It felt like a real um, a, a thing that people were invited into and invited to feel part of. So um, all our guest stars, I think, brought so something so special, and I think all of us were very, which is again something in hindsight I can take for granted. We were we kind of came to the show so young and sort of humble that we felt we were lucky to have them on our show. Yes. And so there was never that thing of your own there was an ego bolstering around which made the no, whole we thing. Weren't, it wasn't cliquey. It wasn't cliquey or, or kind of we felt particularly we were like, who's playing this? Giddy. Who's playing this? Yeah. Oh my god, oh my god, really? Yeah. yeah, and so excited to have the fresh energy come in and welcome them in and learn from them like I think that atmosphere is very rare. Um, particularly, I think as you get a bit older, people get it, it, it. You feel like if you go on someone else's show, you're in someone else's house. It just didn't feel like that on Being Human. So I think all our guest stars would be more than welcome to come back, mm -hmm. but really enjoyed their time. And 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 I think again, a, a, a credit to Toby is he would be very careful with even our guest stars. No one just felt plonked in and plonked out. Mm -hmm. They had their own story that they could see through to the end. And um, for most of them, I think they were pretty happy with their, the, the journey that their, their, their characters took, which is very satisfying as an actor to feel like, no, nope, I've told my little thread and I'm, I'm good to go. Um, mm. And I felt like that was true of my, my arc with Annie even. So, and then it's, it's bittersweet. You, you're ready to leave, but it's sad to leave. Which of you was the catalyst for the most outtakes? <laughs> No. By far, by I'm far. About, I was constantly professional. <laughs> On your your close up, <laughs> and then don't say that. they no. would turn around and and Russell, <laughs> Russell is probably hands down the funniest. I I don't laugh the way I laugh when I'm with Russell with anyone else. He is so funny, which is a treat. And everyone's like. That. Pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make us laugh. Yeah, 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 do something yeah. funny. Um, no, but like giddy. The giggles was the biggest. Like 
it was all that was the worst thing for outtakes. I think it was just uh, yeah. Well, you you don't corpse much though. You can keep I'm a straight so face. I'm so good. That's the thing. I'm so good, but Russell a handful of times got me. Yeah, I but mean, otherwise I'm very good. You'll, you you'll, you'll see scenes where, I, where I'm clearly supposed to be Mitchell's supposed to be looking at <laughs> George because he's speaking to him or whatever. I just can't do it. I would have to look another way. I mean, constantly just looking at my feet or whatever. I couldn't look at Russell. Yeah, there was a few. Remember the day where we had to look at the back of the head or they put a. Some of the crew were actually crying <laughs> and they had to leave and they'd put tennis balls up for us or something, didn't they? <laughs> well, there's this, I like. remember the scene where I'm on Mitchell's lap pretending to be a dummy. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And you and Nina walk in, you and Sinead walk in. Like at each other. And we all have to have this standoff where we all look at each other awkward. And <laughs> It just did not happen. I mean, hours were going past and we yeah. couldn't get the scene because we just couldn't stop laughing. And to the point where everyone was laughing yeah. and oh, it lovely. just it just was it cost, impossible. It cost the BBC a bit of money. Yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> Sorry, my bad. But his bad. Because it was your... I don't know what it was your... You were the catalyst of that. Ah, yeah. the good old days. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, to laugh. Yeah. Sorry, love. Has it made you have more of an attraction to genre media, like seeking out other fantasy, sci-fi, acting jobs? Yeah, totally. I mean, just yeah. for like the fan base. I mean, I said it earlier, but the fan base, for just doing things like this all the time and sci-fi fans and that supernatural level, there's a huge loyal group of people which are just incredible and loving and everybody we've met today so far we just sit there going like everybody's so, so nice, nice. Yeah. everybody's so nice and happy to be here it's a very and supportive happy medium isn't mm. it that people really geek off about and embrace and that's mm -hmm. the nicest thing to be a part of that world to always now have that mm -hmm. you know because like we've done doctor who and mm. things like that that's like something that's going to be with you forever and there will always be people that you know mm -hmm. what remember you for that and that's mm -hmm. great and I think it's a really interesting and creative way to get into <coughs> some very deep subjects of, of the human condition of um, p politics and social justice like there's there's a lot of heavy things that sci-fi tackles in in the most entertaining and accessible way um, so I I'm a big I'm like whatever gets people talking or thinking about yeah. um, the world that we live in in a different way and engages people is all right by me mm -hmm. um and like i say that the, the the actual things that some of being us as characters got to deal with in such a fun way i think is really cool it's really really cool so yeah, yeah. open my eyes for that for sure do you think you related to your characters at all like your, on a personal level yeah man i think i think you kind of have to i mean it's I think it's impossible not to. I don't know how you play a character, and um, it is—it's a really good question. I mean, you, you sometimes get asked it, and I don't know how you—how you don't um, get involved emotionally. I mean, you—you you have to think about it. You have to make those those uh, correlations and those those connections all the time. And then before you know it, you're so far in. It's—it's it's sometimes hard to decipher, um, you know, which bit is you and which bit is the character, and how much you've given to it, and how much you've been influenced by the writing or mm -hmm. inspired by by uh, different sources. But um, yeah, I would I would I would think I probably probably gave a lot to it, yeah. Yeah, every emotion you put in that character through you have to kind of instinctively pull from somewhere in you. Mm. So definitely. And as as the writing went on they kind of leaned towards us, you know, they knew our voices, they knew our mannerisms, our kind of rhythms and that's mm -hmm. definitely you're definitely you put yourself more into that. But I think you know, as long as you're you love is that fun? Yeah. As long as you uh love your job you commit like completely to it don't you and then going back to the thing of the the the, the, the relationship that all the three of us have um it's all right now yeah it's um fine. You i got, think you got to check it though. yeah well in a minute <laughs> um, just about to get deep um, so uh, but, but the trust that was there between us i mean like for four years very um informative four years of of our lives personally i think we got a chance to bring that to set all of us so as you go through loss and love and family stuff and friendships and stuff it, we got to play it all out um on set and because we do have such a chemistry and trust with each other and friendship it was a really safe place to bring all of that stuff so even I think all of us do relate to our characters, but even more so because we got to return as our lives 
naturally mm. progressed and we did other things we got to come back and play it out and come back and play it out and I, I to me that's just a proper turn on it's fine whoever's that is it's good <laughs> yeah anymore. we're working on it and it's good no worries there yeah safe <laughs> <laughs> just make it safe <laughs> yeah, make it safe <laughs> <coughs> Russell obviously last year you were in Banished yeah um, she, which has also got a pretty big fandom of yeah it. Um, and have you seen the campaign to have it brought back? And yeah, I've seen stuff. Yeah, bring him back. I'd I'd love it. I mean, I think we we're overshadowed by uh, another costume drama of the same period uh, in the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, I'm glad we're friends because if we were, I would probably no. It's uh, yeah. We it, I mean, that was an ex an incredible job. That was an expensive show. You taking everyone out to Australia for like five months and. I feel like it would have been brilliant to do it again. Yeah, I'm quite. Uh, hopefully, another channel will do it, but I don't know if like time is the window for that opportunity has passed. Ripper Street happened quite soon after, you know. So maybe one day. But I'm really happy that Pole Dark's been a huge phenomenon Thanks, of success. That's been. <laughs> Thanks so I'm much. really really thrilled about that. So, Thanks, mate. Cheers. It's good. Thank you. So speaking about Pole Dark, what can we expect? The next um, what can you expect? Well, it, 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 we pick it up exactly where we left off from the last year. So it's it's a time when uh, you know uh, Ross and and um, Demels have just lost a child. His company is is, is down the pan. They're broke, um, and he's being arrested for. Um, uh, he looks like he's gone to prison. Uh, so it's it's a sad state of affairs to kick off the series. <laughs> so, yeah. Fun <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's, it's a cheery beginning. Um, yeah, there's just so much story in it, and all the characters have a massive arc in the next series. Um, I think we're, I think we're ten episodes next year. Have you um, got a massive arc? Yeah, huge. Are you that's, in it? That's what people say. Are you in it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm in all of them. Oh, well, all of the episodes. I made you? all of them. Thank you so much. Done all right. Yeah. I'm in all the deleted scenes. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's going to be huge this year. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it, it was it was big the first year, but with with all the support and and um, and the fan base that we've accumulated, it's uh, it's it's going to be a big one next year. Um, he's been. Uh, Maybe, um, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say. Oh, all right. Spoiler, spoiler, alert. Okay. spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, we should hold back on that. find it very different filming um, the period stuff as opposed to, say, the sci fi being human. Um, I don't know. Difficult. I mean, it is very different. different. Yeah, different. Oh, different. Sorry, yeah. it's difficult. Um, yeah, it's 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 another world, <laughs> quite quite literally, actually. For for um, which do you prefer? Characters. Which do I prefer? Um, they're so different. It's it's hard to it's hard to call it. Um, they're mm. so very very it's difficult, right. isn't it? Yeah, but, yeah it's yeah. not easy. Oh, but when it. we're sat right here, yeah, to make it yeah, <laughs> it's um. <laughs> It's it's a really hard call to, to right, yeah. don't worry about it. You know, yeah. I have a ho I ride a horse in the other show, so I get to hang out with a horse all, all right. day. Okay, horses just, are great. Just get a new question. These are slippers. Dealing with horses on set. Um, you love a horse, don't you? Oh, I love horses. Um, and then you just love no, I love a horse. Saddle up and just ride away. There's nothing. There's not much to it really. <laughs> he does love a horse. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. No, the gods, they're well behaved. Are they? Yeah, they yeah. They train them up good. They train them up good, and I'm a pretty decent jockey, so, you know. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, totally. Did you ever do it? Did you give it a shot and banished? Yeah. Oh, you didn't have horses banished? We didn't, know. We had uh, uh, yeah. kangaroos. That's what we got. <laughs> <laughs> they're tough. They're tough to ride, but if you, you kind of hold on yeah, to yeah, the yeah. Couch, a you can get yeah. your hand in there. That's right. <laughs> so. Yeah. Riding kangaroos. There's never going to be a second series, mate. Yeah, no. Really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do, you have, oh, sorry. Oh, do you ever like binge watch your own shows? Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> no. <laughs> that would be too no. much for me. Whoa. No. Oh, God, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> When's the last time you've watched Sugar Rush then? Oh, gosh. You uh, YouTubed uh, it this morning. Yeah. <laughs> that I have on loop. Um, <laughs> it, it's been a while. It's been a while. But I did not too long ago see um, Sarah Stewart and Olivia. Um, we had a little reunion on my birthday. They came down, which uh, was so lovely because I hadn't seen them in years. So, it, I mean, it's one of those things, I think, being in this industry, you have such an intense time together yeah. that even if time passes, once you've been on a show, once you see each other again, there's just somewhere really nice to return to. Um, but I haven't watched it in a while. <laughs> but someone came up with a picture today oh, and I was yeah. like, oh, wow. weren't I pretty? And I was like, I'm sort of reminiscing. It's funny. It's funny. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Russell, yes. another big sci-fi show you were in, 
way back when was Doctor Who. Yeah. And for a while there were some rumours that you could even play the Doctor. Would any of you like to be in that show in the future, possibly as the main role? I think he'd do a very good job, wouldn't he? Yeah. I mean, I would sign that petition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be all for that. I'd sign that petition. You could be my Doctor. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Who? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Russell uh, Tovey. Yeah, he'd smash it. He'd kill, kill it. it. He'd kill it. They'd be very lucky to have him. Mm-hmm. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And Laura, this year you're going to be joining the, the cast of Suspects. Yes. Right? Yes. I mean, I've heard improvises. Yes. A lot of its dialogue. So yes. Yeah. So how have you prepared right. yourself for that? And how, how well do you rate your improv skills? Her improv skills are... Gangster, 100%. Yeah. Ten. Um, off the she chart. She does go into a different accent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, Suspects was was real trip to film. Um, I've been in the States and it was my first job back here and it was just so important for my little acting soul because it was suddenly back to basics um no hair and makeup practically um basically a couple of minutes just and then just contouring just yeah <laughs> and massive lighting effect um, <laughs> You're right. filter. Yeah, got it. um but it was like back to basics strip strip back everything we had a, a two camera people that shoot documentaries long lensy we had a couple of takes of each scene if that two days an episode as opposed to two weeks and just acting it was just thinking on your feet being really engaged you have to know your facts and not been on is yet. there a script when's it on? there's a script but it's loose um it's end of this year it's coming on they don't end have this it here, year mm, towards the end have you got a copy? Can we watch it? Yeah, we can watch it. Okay, yeah. great. Um, but it and I and I have seen it and I thought it was fantastic. I mean, just yourself. Do you write yourself? Yeah, Maybe. I was really good in it. <laughs> uh, and you're improv in good. Yeah, I'm very impressed. Yeah. To be honest with you, watching it now, I'm like, <gasps> like I I learn a lot. You have to really learn on your feet. Damien's in it, um, who became um, part of the team of Being Human, Damien Maloney, and he's been on Suspects from the off um, as as Claire as as well, and those two are brilliant at it and as much as I think I feel confident with the improv stuff it's a whole new beast filming that fast and just knowing how much you can bring to it and where those little um, details will fall in the edit and stuff like that Mm -hmm. I mean if I did it again I think I could do a much better job but I you really have to sort of learn on your feet it was so fast Um, the whole thing was done in a couple of weeks and so I learned a lot, and, and watching it back, I do see where there's room for improvement for sure. But it, I loved it. I thought it was such a cool experience, um, and I think it does give the show something very, very unique. So I'm excited to have that come out. Okay. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. It's lovely to meet you all.